So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Hot Song Podcast. Today is August the 29th, 2024. And our topic this evening is on acceptance. So we'll be talk, starting to talk a little bit about what acceptance, um, my understanding of what acceptance is. Um, and let's see. So how should I had to talk about this. So why why acceptance? Um, recently, I've been asked to anchor in cosmic love. My guides told me, you know, this is what I should be kind of working on. Um, so that that's that's told me about. Oh, I don't know, maybe a week ago or around that time. So it's fairly recently. So I've been really thinking about it. And um, so for me though, how to anchor in cos cosmic love. So I was thinking, okay, so we're talking about love now. So um, so what do I know about love? That's not a lot actually. Um, I do know that we, you know, there is human love that I am aware of and I've felt it um, and I've experienced it. However, cosmic love is not something that I am too familiar with because um, it's cosmic love. Um, and from my point of view is cosmic love is not something that I believe it's not something that I think my mind can grasp while I'm still in this in this body. I can try. I can I can do my best. But will I actually get to the point where I would be able to understand what cosmic love is inside and out to to have a a, a really comprehensive um, experience and understanding of it. I doubt very much because um, my human experience is very limited. So, and we're talking about cosmic. So if my experience of the cosmos is very limited, limited to right now to, to earth of observing um, the universe from earth's point of view, from my personality, my consciousness point of view. So the, I would say the, the possibility that I would be able to actually understand what cosmic love is, is slim, rather slim. However, that does not mean I don't, I don't start because yes, maybe right now it seems to be slim. However, I'm eternal, even though Currently, my observation is just from a very limited point of view. However, if I start now, one day, I don't know how, how many lifetimes going forward or whenever that may be, perhaps I'll get a better understanding of it. So that's the reason why I started thinking about, okay, so how, how should I approach this understanding what cosmic love is. And um, I think maybe just a day or two ago, I started getting um, an aha moment is, you know what? Um, the, the personality, so my ego, I'm talking about, well, my ego, my personality is limited. However, my true self is unlimited because my true self has lived many lifetimes, have lived um, most likely um, not just on earth, but you know, somewhere else as well. Maybe many other places, many different experiences. So if I'm just trying to grasp this from my personality's point of view, then yes, it's going to be very um, limited and very incomplete. However, the best, what I can do is actually to get out of myself, 
is to actually sink down to the, the eternal part of me. And so I've been trying to do that. And um, so, and of course that, that comes, the next point is, is really to, from that point of view, it's about the first thing that comes to mind is really um, acceptance because there is this eternal part of me and then there's the personality part of me. So then um, even though I can sink into and I can feel the eternal part of me, however, I'm still evaluating whatever it is that I'm feeling from the personality and that's how we are constructed for the moment. Perhaps at some point, the personality would get to the point where it's it does not interfere. Um, so, so then, however, I'm in the process of really dissolving more and more of trying to look at my experiences, trying to look at reality through my personality and to look at reality and experiences from the, the point of view of the eternal me. And the first thing I have to do is really to accept um, my personality, for example. And so that that kind of um, prompt me to get at more, to find out more of what acceptance truly is. And um, a few things comes to mind is acceptance. First thing, of course, is to is to acknowledge that um, the only time that I am aware um, of acceptance is when I don't feel it. When something, when I get triggered, I mean, when I'm not in acceptance, that's really the, the times when I am a lot more conscious that, oh, okay, there's something here that I'm not okay with that that somehow a part of me is not resonating you know yeah I have a I have a resistance to um, so I get triggered so that's when I know that oh okay I'm triggered now so um why what 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 within my consciousness is really reacting to this trigger so then I understand that the first part is actually to acknowledge, to be aware that there is a resistance. Resistance simply means that you're not okay with whatever it is that you're experiencing. And I can um, give a, a, an example of that is I've been following a um, archaics. So archaics is um, Jason, Brashear and and he's talking about like he, he actually have read a lot of old books and he like, many 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 volumes of it and he's been doing that for maybe the last decade or, or two at um, maybe about maybe 20 years or so maybe maybe more so it's not like something that he he just started so he actually have been consistently reading these old texts and start to piece together real history. Not the history that, you know, that's in the history books, the, 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 um, the, the history books that, we, that I've studied in, let's say, university or even in primary school and all that, but the real history, the, risk, the history that is um, a lot more ancient. So, and he kind of uncovered certain patterns that I, like when I was going through his material, I got triggered. So fear came up when we was like, okay, so he's, because he was able to um, look at backwards for a long time and he was able to see certain patterns. So he was saying that, okay, so this is what's happened. 
And so that means in the future, you know, certain things are happening because they, it's very cyclical. So I was like, so that triggered my fear. And I was like, okay. And I, and I recognize it. I recognize that as fear that I'm, so I'm definitely being triggered. And so I stopped um, listening to, to his stuff for a while. However, it's not, it's not because I don't accept it. It's just that I know that I'm being triggered and it is too much. So I'm being overwhelmed. So I, I really need to go slow with myself. So that kind of teach me about the process of acceptance. So first is to acknowledge when you are out of um, alignment with acceptance. So you know that you're triggered. And then the next thing is um, we need to process the reason why you are being triggered. So fear, so process the fear. So I was able to start processing the fear and um, do release work on that really clear whatever it is within my body that is being triggered to feel the fear um, because it's it's not actual fear it's just a it's it's not actual fear in that you know there is um something that's going to harm me right in front of me so so then that's 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 what i mean by that it's not real fear it's not actual danger that is right here in front of me it's actually just something that is going to happen and the unknown is triggering this fear so processing the fear doing all that processing so so again so process it process all of that so so for me it is acknowledging that i'm being triggered and then doing the process and then um however there is more to to acceptance it's not about um accepting something allowing something or not it is also about um is this something that i want to continue to expose myself because the information that you know i'm still using the jason what jason uh first year during archaics is is kind of um talking so my own processes i got triggered so i stopped do the process and then i asked myself is it in front of me to continue on um to learn more because it's it's amazing information so is it in front of me to continue to process this to to learn more and get more of it so then the next thing is really is it in front of me and i never quite understand what that means so never quite, i can't can't quite uh, grasp what that means until um, I think another Jason, so Jason Estes was, was explaining that, you know, not everything is in front of you. In front of you, the way that he means it is, um, let's say, what, what, okay, I'm still using the, the archaics. So is it in front of me? And I've been asking myself, is it in front of me? And my answer is no, it's not in front of me. It's not that I I needed to know this information in order for me to go forward. I'm just um somebody suggested it and I somebody suggested a cake. So I looked into it. I you know really understand what he's trying to to do and I understand why a cakes was being recommended. So, but after all of that, I kind of know that right now it's not in front of me to keep going, even though um, I understand the, or I, I, I know what the, um, the value of keep going 
to, to hear more about all the information that Archaics has shared. I get to the point where I made a choice that's not in front of me right now. It may be in, um, in the future, however, right now, it is not in front of me to do. So I also want to talk a little bit about what is in front of you or what is in front of me. So what is in front of, what is in front of, of me is, is this something that um, has to do with my daily life? If let's say if something happens with a friend or with family, then it definitely is in front of me because I have to see family, I have to see that friend regularly in order to maintain that relationship. So that means it is in front of me. So the meaning of in front of me is, is it relevant to my life? And, um, and a lot of the times we, um, so the expression of in front, is it in front of you, is not easy to determine because sometimes something may not be a part of your daily life. You don't have to deal with, with that particular issue in, a, in your daily life. It may be something that is completely unrelated to your daily life. However, it may be related to your purpose, your purpose of why you are here. For example, um, some people uh, are absolutely, they, So give another example is, for example, I think um, last year, starting last year, but I think before that, there has been other um, news about it as well, is really um, human trafficking. So is it part of my daily life? Um, no, it does, I don't know anybody who has been trafficked. And I know that that's something that is happening around the um, different countries have varying degrees of that happening. It is happening in the background. And a lot of the times it is not in front of anyone. However, for some people, it is their calling to do something about it. So that's one of the, the, the I would say, one of the, what's the word I'm looking for? So when it's when it's part of your calling, when it's part of your life purpose, then even though something is not happening as part of your daily life, it is still in front of you because you made that choice. Maybe not you personally, but um, a bigger part of you has made that choice for you. So things are being orchestrated to for you to look into. So part of acceptance is acknowledging and also processing any triggers. And then after you've processed the triggers, you have to really ask yourself, is it in front of you to deal with that? And um, one more thing I want to talk about is that in front of you is, I think I see that a lot, especially on um, social media, is people like to put their life stories online. You know, all the good things and all the bad things that happen to them, they just put online and then people would just comment. It's so... Is that in front of you? Because it could be, and and I know there are, there are times when um, something that's being put in the social media is so triggering that it feels like, okay, I want to put in my two cents worth and, and to do that, but is it in front of you? So 
what I'm trying to say is that this, right now we are being exposed to a lot of things that are actually not technically in front of us to deal with. And so deciphering or choosing what is in front of you, what actually is in front of you, meaning that you need to do something about it because it's part of your daily life or it's part of your calling, then you have um, at a soul level chosen to that, you know, it's, it's part of what it is that you need to work through. So that is for me what in front of you um, entails. So being focused, really being judicial about what is in front of you and what is not in front of you is very important because we only have 24 hours a day. We only have very limited time. And there's so many things that is naturally in front of us to handle. And if you start to get um, distracted by you know, other things that you get triggered, then you may stretch you may spread yourself too thin. So then that is what part of the acceptance is to be judicial about what it is that you want to continue allowing yourself to get triggered. Because when you get triggered, that's when you know that you're not in alignment with acceptance what else um and the other thing is we are all each one of us we are unique whatever it is that triggers me may have no effect whatsoever to someone else and vice versa so um knowing what it is that is in front of you is part of the management and the, the, the process of acceptance. So acceptance is really to acknowledge that something is happening. So let's say there is war, right? I'm a pacifist. So when, when there's a, a war happening, Am I in, in agreement with it? Definitely no. Do I accept it? Absolutely yes. Because if something is happening, that means that somewhere within the collectives, there are some people that still needed to have that experience. They may not want it, but they still need it. And that's why war is still happening. And at some point when we've... Um, collectively gotten to the point where we have processed our fears, processed our um, all the, the, the different emotions and beliefs that has us react to any disagreement so violently that we have to go to actually resort to war. And that, that will happen someday. Just not right now, because right now, yes, we still have war. Not um, exactly where I am. However, there's somewhere in the world right now, there are more than in more than one place that there is somebody fighting a war with each other. And, and so because that's happening, the, the acceptance part is to really accept that when something is happening, in this reality that you're in, that means somebody within the collective of, of this reality still needed that experience in order for them to move forward. So that's what for me acceptance is, is to understand that, yeah, it's happening, I don't like it, however, Somebody else within the collective still needed it, still needed that experience. Human trafficking is 
still happening because somewhere within the human collective, there are still people that wanted to have that experience to be trafficked and to do the trafficking. So all of that, that is still going on because it is an experience that at a collective level, it is still happening. Not at a personal level, not for me. Um, however, I accept that it's still something that is happening because somebody else needed to have it. So there is a difference between acceptance and agreement. I can accept something without agreeing that you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's happening. So just, just um, but I accept that someone needs it does not mean that I agree that it's a good thing and I want it to include it in my experience. Uh, no, thank you very much. I'm not in agreement with human trafficking. I accept that it is happening. However, I know that one day we will get out of that now. The, um, and then the, the other thing is, is it in front of me to do something about it? Because I only have a limited time frame that is that I can work with. Is it in front of me to actually do something about it? Next question to ask. So can I accept it? Yes. After I process all my emotions, all my indignation, judgment, blah, 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 all that. Uh, yes, after I process it, I can accept that. Somebody within the collective still needs it. Do I agree with it? No. Do I want to do something about it? It's not in front of me. And so I acknowledge it. I process it. I understand it is not in front of me. However, um, what can I do to, within my, within the, what it is that I can do to support it or not support it, to do something about it is I can energetically just put my, to register my disagreement. So yes, there are people that still needed that. And I disagree, I do not want to. Um, so then energetically is to just have it in my mind that, okay, I don't want to experience that in right in front of my life, not within my family, not. So those are things that, I disagree with for any one of my family or the people near me to experience it. And I also disagree with the energetically not in agreement that someone still needed to experience it. So then um, I think one of the ways we can do is to vote no. So how do we vote no is simply to just say that, okay, I accept that um, it is happening and I vote to not have it in the, the, the reality that I'm working to create in. Am I explaining myself clearly so far? Any uh, questions or comments? No, no comments? Very good explanation. Um, but I, I guess what I'm getting is that when you accept it, you don't fight it. Um, I disagree with that. Yeah. So when you accept something, you don't fight it. It's okay. Um, I think that has to be clarified. You don't 
you can you can still say for example um yeah i i know that there's human trafficking happening i accept that it is happening however i disagree that it is something that is actually needed for us right. as a human collective to continue to experience so there is something i can do i can energetically register a a no no thank you i don't want to continue to experience it and i can um support it by donating money for other people who are do who um, are actually actively doing something to um, fight this to actually you know go and rescue people go and um, find out and shut down the people that are actually perpetrating the trafficking so I'm not it's not in front of me to physically go and do those things mm -hmm. I can still energetically support them I can still financially support them well the reason I'm talking about don't fight is because sometimes let's say that people talk about you know we need to clean up the earth but they're so angry and they're so upset and they bring so much negative energy to it that in a way it's, it's not good. I did mention that, like, when we yeah. get triggered, we have to process the emotions, right? Right. Yeah. So that is a big part of it. Because when you are acting um, in when while you are triggering, you are definitely um, you're not helping energetically. So that's what I was getting at. Yes. Yeah. So you have to get to the part where you you have a a duty to process your own emotions so that then when you try to take action, um, you can actually take action from a position of neutrality rather than I'm angry, I have to go fight them. So yes. Yeah, it's not that. Yes, you to the yes. Point where thank you. Where you, you process yes. your own emotions, you yes. let go of judgment and then, you know, yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people miss that because they think that, you know, they're the ones they have to fight it and you know that and it's like, well, first be, be neutral, process your stuff, then you can, yeah, very good, thank you. Yeah, and there's that part of, um, you know, acknowledging that you, you're triggered by something because when we, when we find out something, um, then we may get triggered. Mm -hmm. The process the trigger first, mm -hmm. and and then um, decide. You know, do you want to play with this? Is it in front of you to play with, whatever mm -hmm. the situation is, or not? Mm -hmm. And if it's if you want to, then you know you take actions accordingly. If you mm -hmm. don't want to, you take actions accordingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the neutrality part, yes. Yeah. And um, I just want to ask, so are you clear? Is everybody clear on what I mean by is it in front of you? Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, that brings up something else. A lot of advertisers want to put their stuff in front of you. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Ask the doctor about Cialis. <laughs> All that, you know, ask the doctor about blah, blah, blah. Right, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, yeah, whatever. You just have to tune those things out. <laughs> but that's yeah. not easy because they play on your fear. That's another big thing. Well, if you know that, you know, if you know that your fear is being triggered, then process the fear. Right. But a lot of people don't realize. Um, I mean, some of it, I think, is unconscious. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 
very oh, yeah, true. You, you, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I mean by um, yeah. Um, we're in a a time period where a lot of things are being pushed on us. Yes. So that's the the the. I think it's really to confuse us, confound us. So that's why um, it's more now than ever that we needed to focus, to really check in. When you get triggered, you process your emotions first, then you have to ask yourself, is it something that is in front of me to do, to do something about it or not? So very, very important is to actually focus. Mm. And be selective, right? Absolutely, because we are human. Yeah. There's only so much time and so much resource that we have. So when there are, you know, I don't know, there's so many things happening mm -hmm. now, you know, mm -hmm. as, as, you know as, as you mentioned, uh, some some of you mentioned okay there's financial collapse coming and then they are talking about another pandemic coming and then they're talking about you know wars happening you know in a couple of places blah 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 so many things and and so it's it's like it's being engineered in a way to say fear 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 yep. so yep Definitely process the fear when you when you feel yourself um, actually being triggered is to process the fear first. Mm -hmm. When you process the fear, then you actually um, you clear your mind. You it's it's like when you're trying to look at something through murky water, you, you cannot see anything. No, you can't. No. You just have to you know clear your um, emotions first just process it and then get to the that still point and then really look at right or play with it or not and now, what what do you what do you want to play with and then really choose now you know i i heard somewhere that uh people vote with their emotions like this is a political vote so um, I guess we're trying to, what we're doing here, we're trying to um, handle our emotions so we'll make better decisions, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for the, um, the fire truck to go by. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. It's, it's that noise is blaring at me now outside on the street. Mm, can't hear it. Okay, wonderful. At least you guys can hear it. Yes, there are so many things. Um, it's, it's all about manipulating our emotions because as long as we are stressed, we cannot think clearly, then we, um, we mm. actually, it's a lot easier to manipulate how we react and what action we take or don't take. Yeah, when we are so distracted and you know in fear mode, so yeah, wow, so true. Yep. Um, yeah, I I like the how how you put it that if it's in front of you, then then yeah, we have to do something because often I I felt so guilty. Um, the regarding human trafficking or animal welfare or the way we treat nature. So I was always feeling guilty. I don't do more on the social, in, in the society. But now I, I understand that, yeah, it's very good. If it's really in front of me, if an animal is abused or it, I see I see it in front of me trafficking yeah humans then I have to act yeah so. it is, it is um, mm -hmm, very true 
we have to actually focus on what is in front. So what is important? Yeah. If it is important, even if it's happening halfway around the world, then you go do something about it. But if it's not important, then if it's not your purpose, not your calling, then let go of the guilt, let go of the judgment, process all of that. Because mm -hmm. that is kind of drawing on your energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. That's... That's the way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that is such a good point. And the, the other thing came to me is circle of influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's in, within our circle of influence, we'll do something about it. And if it's not, I mean, we do our part. Let's say for... Uh, nature or mother earth we do our part the best we can but we can't do everything for everybody else we just do our part yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good and um, let's see what else do i want to talk about acceptance Okay, well, I think that pretty much has covered everything. The only thing I want to cover is that if it is in front of you, then you have you trust that that means you have all you needed to move through it if it is in front of you because we are we are only we are usually only given what it is and that is um that we can handle so if it's in front of you then just have faith that you have everything that you need to move through it no matter what it is and with that, then that's, that's all I want to talk about is acceptance. Um, any other comments or questions about acceptance? Okay, in that case, I just, um, let's do the meditation then.